Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Tell me, do I look pretty today? Better than usual? You're not meant to look good when you're 13 or 14 years old. And I definitely did not. This is how I used to do my makeup in high school, but with a little bit of a twist. Unlike most people overseas, I didn't get to wear makeup to school. It was against all the rules. Once in a blue moon, I would maybe wear mascara. So that's kind of how it worked and probably why I knew nothing about makeup when I was 13 and I started high school. Because, you know, our high school's from grade 8 to 12. I know some people work differently, but I went to high school from 13 to 18. Like, it doesn't look that bad from far away, but knowing how much better it could look if you don't have to squint at it, I don't like it. But you know what, at one point I thought this is the best thing ever and I looked so cool and who would need to do more than this? So if you want to know how I used to look when I had to do my makeup, please keep watching. Before I knew a lot about makeup and even knew that there is something like a primer, I did know that it was bad for your skin to wear foundation just as it is and to wear it a lot. So I didn't want to do that even though foundation was all I had. So I looked up online how to make your own BB cream because I heard that a BB cream is much, much healthier on your skin and better to wear. But online, apparently, you just take your foundation and your face cream and you mix them to get a BB cream. Which would have been great, I would have loved to do that, but I didn't even have a face cream back then. I don't know what I did, I don't know how my skin was, but I didn't use face cream. Even though I can't go a day without face cream today. But what I used to do is I would just take my foundation and today I'm using this... DCL Perfect Wear Foundation that I got from random place and I'm going to put it on spots to cover them. And this is all I used to do. And like the top broke so you have to turn it out because if you pump it nothing comes out. So you have to take it out like this and then I'd put it on my finger and then I'd put it on any spots that I don't like. Like this one, it's real big and nice. And I usually get spots around my mouth and I remember thinking in high school that spots were only because you have like dirt on your skin. I didn't think it was because, you know, spots just happen. I thought spots were a sign that I wasn't taking care of my face, that I wasn't cleaning my face enough. And I remember <laughs> the first day back at school after my first kiss, it was a Monday, I had this huge pimple here. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is from kissing someone. And every time I'm going to kiss someone, I'm going to have these huge pimples. What am I going to do with myself? This is terrible. I never thought it would be this bad. And luckily that's not the case. But yeah, I thought I was just a really messy eater because I always had spots around my face. I remember thinking my face was flawless after I did that, even though that was never the case. The next thing I would do is I would put on eyeliner, which was just as much of a disaster. And I just used whatever one I could get from my mom. I'm using this Colossal Kajal one today. And I knew that you lined your waterline, so I always did that, and it was pretty easy, even though instead of just putting it in my eye, I would like pull my eye all the way out and put it in. And I knew that winged eyeliner was a thing, but I couldn't really figure out how to do it. So after I line my waterline, I'm going to show you how I thought you had to do winged eyeliner. So the thing with wing eyeliner was, I never knew that you could put eyeliner on your upper lash line. I thought you only put it here. And then I couldn't figure out how you get a wing from here. So I would take this eyeliner, this pencil, as it is, I'd line my waterline, and then I'd try dragging it out the corner of my eye, like that, and then I would call that my wing. So I would just take it here out of the corner of my eye, and drag it out. And it was always a disaster. It never looked nice and still doesn't look nice. I still can't do this because this is not how you're supposed to do it. But yeah, that was how I decided to do my winged eyeliner. And you know, from a distance, it didn't look that bad. Like if I'm looking myself now in the screen, it doesn't look that bad. But up close, I know what a disaster it is. So it definitely, it's much better since I discovered that you can actually put eyeliner on your upper lash line and that you can use liquid eyeliner to do it. I remember thinking liquid eyeliner was the biggest disaster ever because what do you do with it? It doesn't go anywhere. And my teacher once told me the story where she said she was doing her makeup that morning and she was putting on liquid eyeliner and accidentally put the brush in her eye instead of on her eyelid. And then the black washed all over her eyes. So she had to try and get this black out of her eye. So her eyeball literally looked like blackish gray from the color from the liquid eyeliner that went over it. And I was just like, no, 
I'm not doing liquid eyeliner and obviously I've changed my mind but that that's why I didn't want to do it and that's why I had these awkward corner eye little wings going on. After that I would always go in with mascara and I think this is the extra super lash from Rimmel and I think this is the exact one that I used for a really long time but I always lost some mascaras like I don't think I've ever finished one and I never really use them that often so what would happen is my mascara would dry up and then I'd just steal my mom's or my sister's because that's just what I did so I'm just gonna put this on. Props to 14 year old me for knowing this, but I always put mascara on my lower lash line. And the reason I did this is not because I thought, you know, it's just something you did. It's because I remember wearing mascara this one time with this one girl and she let me borrow hers before we were going out. She was one of mine, my sister's friends. And I put it on my lower lashes because I thought, well, if we're gonna put it at the top, why not put it at the bottom? And she told me, you know what? You don't have to do that. The mascara from the top will eventually get on your bottom lashes. So just don't do that, it's unnecessary. And I thought to myself, you know, this is gonna be my signature look that I have mascara on my lower lash line and this is gonna make me stand out from the rest and little did I know that everyone that actually knew a little bit about makeup was doing that, but I thought for a little while that I was the coolest thing ever because I put mascara on my lower lash line. I never used to wear eyeshadow simply for the reason that I thought it would be way too hard to learn how to do it. So I never messed with that. I just did this and I thought I'd look great for all special occasions. And then I put the attention on my lips. Because I heard or read somewhere that if you do nothing on your eyes, you do something in your lips. And if you do nothing in your lips, you do something in your eyes. And since I could never do anything on my eyes, I always tried bringing the attention to my lips. And I think I had like one red lipstick for very special occasions and I had one awkward beige skin colored one that I never wore because it just never looked good. And then I had a few lip glosses and then lip ices that had a bit of color in them. Like this Labella one, it's a red one so it gives off a bit of a red color and it makes your lips shimmer. So what I used to do if I wanted my lips to stand out for a really special occasion is I would take brown eyeliner and I would line and color in my lips with it before going over it with a lip gloss or a lip ice like this because this is usually all that I had with me. So I'm just going to use this because it's brown and I'm going to be filling in my lips like I used to do. As you can see, I would put on as much of the lip gloss as I possibly could to try and get the colors to mix as much as I can, to try and get a purplish color. And I'm not sure why I thought red and brown would give me purple, because it's red and blue, but it did kind of create a pretty warm brown color that I like to wear, even though like my mom said, no, it's too dramatic, you're not supposed to wear such dark colors. This is what I wanted to wear. And of course this would come off immediately the second I eat or drink anything and there'd be such a dark rim of lipstick on my cup if I took a sip. But that's okay because I thought I looked cool even though it was coming off. But this is what I'd usually do. But sometimes, just sometimes, this rarely ever happened. I think I did it like three or four times. But I would put on blush and I always wanted to put on blush even though I had like the reddest of cheeks because my mom had this big fluffy brush. And I don't have a fluffy brush like that, mine is just this big, but hers was like this and it was soft and everything, it was so cool and it was this pretty pinkish red colour I believe. And I just wanted to put that all over my face every day, all the time, because I love the way it feels. So I don't have a brush like that today, I just have my brush. And I'm just going to take my blush from my Beauty Treats palette that I usually take, but I would just take, my mom had, um, it was more this colour than anything else. So I would take it like that and I'd put it on and then be dark and then I just try washing it around until the color looks kind of natural. So I would blend it down because my whole cheeks were usually red. So I would take this color and I would try and work it all the way down to here. So I'd pick up even more sometimes and then even there, get the color in. And I used to think it looked natural, like even in the mirror it looks okay and then in camera it looks really red and bright so it was terrible but 
luckily I never really did this. This was on special of special occasions. Thank goodness for me, my mom's blush did not come out this bright. It was really difficult to get the color to actually show. So I'm just going to go over it with some face powder to calm it down so that it looked more the way it used to. So it's in the areas I'd always put it, but it wasn't this bright. So I'm just going to put this over it. And that's a lot more how it looked, which is better because I wasn't such a red face disaster then, which is a relief that I wasn't that bad, even though there's nothing good about this. The bad thing is what's happening now is usually what happened in the real world too. So I'd look in the mirror and it wouldn't be that bright. You can see it, but it's okay. And if I look in the screen, it's so bright and it stands out so bad and I'd always look that way in photos. So if someone took a picture of us, which they usually did because it's a special occasion we should take pictures, I'd have these super bright red cheeks that you can see where in person I thought I looked okay, it's not that bad, but apparently I was wrong. So I also always wore a ponytail and honestly I still do that a lot. And like I just scratch out the front part and it would be this little piece, but then it'd be a little something, you know, then I have some dimension in my face and it looks cool because I have a fringe even though I had no idea how to style it, even though now I can kind of style it. But it would always be standing in all types of directions like it is now, so I guess it's good that it's a disaster today. But yeah, this is how I used to do my makeup, as bad as it might be and as much progress as I might have made up until now. This is what I would do on special occasions if I thought I had to look pretty. So this is the final result and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video of all the terrible, terrible makeup mistakes that I used to make. And if you used to make similar mistakes or used to do similar things, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear that I'm not the only one that did weird things like this. Like I've watched a few other people doing this my makeup in high school tag as well and their makeup was not that bad, you know, because apparently everyone else knew how to do eyeshadow and they knew about lipsticks and they knew how to put on all these fancy things and I clearly knew nothing so it would make you feel a lot better if I know there's one or two out there as well that also messed up their makeup when they were 13 14 years old and that they never looked good even though they thought they did so let me know what makeup mistakes you used to make because I would love to hear about it and then thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day bye bye